In our last video, I talked about the Saturday NFL games. We have the Rams, Packers, and Ravens, Bills. Now we get into the Sunday games. We have the Chiefs and Browns, and we have yet another rematch of teams who have faced each other twice this season. We have Drew Brees versus Tom Brady, the New Orleans Saints versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I'm Nick Dwyer here for the 10th inning, giving you a preview and prediction for each of these games. Since I'm only doing two games, these previews will be a bit longer than they normally are, but timestamps will be down in the description for each team and for the score for each game. So let's get started with the first game of the day, 3:05. We have the Cleveland Browns going into Kansas City to play the Chiefs. Now Cleveland may have shocked some people, maybe not because the Steelers were on a downward trend anyway, but because the fashion they destroyed the Steelers. 28 points in the first quarter, that shows you mean business. Now they may still be on a bit of a high from that, but that has to disappear quickly as they prepare to face the top seeded Chiefs. While the Browns did have a great first quarter, they were then outscored 37-20, which highlights the inconsistency of this team, although the game was already thought to be over, so who can really blame them? But so that begs the question, which team are we going to see? Are we going to see that first quarter team, or the team that we saw through the rest of the game? Against the Chiefs, they'll need that first quarter team, because even though the Chiefs have been playing close games lately, they're still as dangerous as anyone. Now, Kansas City, they got the one seed. They had that bye week, but in reality, they've had about two bye weeks for at least some of their star players because some of them did not play week 17 like Patrick Mahomes. So let's see if that hurts or helps them as they prepare to face the Browns. So let's start off with Cleveland. Now, Pittsburgh's team was built on defense, and the defense did try to do their best to keep them in the game, but when your offense starts the game with a bad snap to put the score 7-0 Browns only 14 seconds into the game, well, that's a bit of an issue. The next possession, the Browns intercepted Ben, put themselves at the Pittsburgh 48-yard line. Great field position. That led to a touchdown. Next possession, the Steelers had to punt. That led to a touchdown. Next possession, Pittsburgh was intercepted once again, and Cleveland started at the Pittsburgh 15. That led to a touchdown. And that was the first quarter in a nutshell. 28-0 at the end. But outside of the first quarter, the Browns never really sustained any drives other than their two-minute drill to end the first half, which also led to a touchdown. Cleveland really only marched down the field three times the entire game to score, and that led to 17 points, which, you know, isn't bad, but that shows how important the defense really was this game. When they were not gifted field position, their offense did struggle, and that right there is the key to the offense. Prove you can march down the field, because turnovers, especially five, are not a given against Kansas City. Use your run game to open up the pass against his weak run defense, allow Baker Mayfield some freedom in the backfield, things should go well. But as we stated, the defense with five turnovers is what this game came down to. Against the Chiefs, they won't be as lucky. Causing turnovers is obviously what you want to happen, but it will be tough, so limiting points is the name of the game. Kansas City's offense tends to play better against other good teams, so they could easily come out hot right out the gate. The run game at Kansas City isn't as strong as it could be, but the pass game is. Try to stop the pass game, and the best way is get your rush to Mahomes. And that rush consists of Garrett, Richardson, and Vernon. They all need to find a way to get to Mahomes before he can get any of those deep passes off, because defending Hill, Hardman, Watkins, and specifically Kelsey is no easy task. Hope for turnovers, but get to Mahomes, let your offense eat clock, that is your best chance. Then we get to Kansas City, and yeah, Kansas City may not have been playing the best ball over the final six weeks of the season, but they managed to win each game, and that's the perfect end result no matter what. That was then though, this is now. This is where the Chiefs shine, the playoffs, at least last season they did. The only thing they don't want to happen though, is to have their first game be similar to their first game last postseason. Sure. They ended up winning, but the manner in which it happened, not ideal. They want an easier path this season, and the best way for that to happen, make sure their offense doesn't commit any turnovers. I'll state it once again, Cleveland won the game due to five forced turnovers. If there were no turnovers, who knows what would have happened, but the turnovers made the job much easier for them than it should have been. Take care of the ball, work on their secondary, and force their offense to march down the field. And sure, your run defense may not be great, and their run game is, but if you force them to pass, march down the field, you start to hit the weak spots of this team. Then on the offensive side, it's hard for any team out there to find a match for Hill and Kelsey, 
So if you get an early lead as well as hold on to the ball, you should easily win this game. And although the Chiefs have proven that they can come from behind, they do not want to come from behind this game. But if you get the Browns behind, the Browns aren't really known as a team who can come back from behind. So Chiefs will get out early. This will be a bit of a closer game than it probably should be because the Chiefs don't really dominate everyone. They get out to their lead and then kind of call off the dogs. But I think the Chiefs will win this one 30 to 23. That leads me to the second game of the day and the final game of the NFL divisional round. 640 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to New Orleans to play the Saints. Now, we had a couple divisional matchups last week. Now, in these playoffs, we are reaching the third meeting between divisional teams. The biggest difference between those games and this one is that both the previous ones were 1 and 1 against each other in the regular season. This one, the Saints are 2 and 0 against the Bucks. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it will definitely be a talking point entering the game. Tampa made their way here defeating Washington in pretty convincing fashion, although the score won't really say that. Tampa Bay controlled the yardage in the game, but one turnover, a couple of field goals, meant this game was closer than it should have been. Now, Brady did have two touchdowns, Fournette had one, but Sarge had four field goals, which means over half the scoring plays were field goals, not touchdowns. That will not cut it this week against an offense who is much better than Washington. Now, honestly, though, the Saints had a similar path here. Although they weren't marching down the field at will, they had a decent game and found the end zone three times. But the Bears were doing well stopping them. What really won the Saints the game, though, was their defensive effort. So what will this final meeting between the teams this season bring us? Let's start with Tampa. Now, as stated, Tampa was 0-2 against New Orleans during the regular season. Both times, they allowed New Orleans to score over 33 points. Breeze was in for both of those games. Now he's back with a fully loaded lineup. And both games they did play, the defense for Tampa Bay honestly did a decent job at stopping the offense. But you can't ever account for turnovers that the offense is going to have. In their two games this season, the Buccaneers have had six offensive turnovers while only forcing two. The second game was when they forced two and they still couldn't even manage points. That just shows the type of defense the Saints have though. The Saints already have a good offense, so you don't need to give them any more help. For the offense, the key, hold on to the ball. Tampa Bay has been finding their groove in the pass game, and they have a shot to do the same thing this week, but just like Washington, the Saints have a good pass defense. Get quick passes off, hold on to the ball on the offensive end. Defensively, make them work for their touchdowns. If they have short fields, there's really nothing you can do except to hold them to field goals, but if they have to march down the field, that's when you make it tough. Defending the run is what the Buccaneers are great at, but when they played the second meeting, the run game of the Saints was decent. Slow down the run, force Breeze to beat you with his arm. Crazy to say, I know, but Breeze is showing his age, and this could be his last ride. Spoil it by making his job tough, rush him, force him to the ground. This game, their corners will need to play much better if they want to win, because their offense against this defense could make things very tough for them. Then we have New Orleans, who is looking to get a clean sweep on the Buccaneers this season, and it all starts with their defense. Their defense is the main reason why they are where they are. Sure, the offense is still good, but this defense is great. Keep this going, you move on. Just like this is maybe the last ride for Breeze, this may be the last ride for Brady, so who will prevail? The Buccaneers run defense is great, so while you should attempt the run on the offensive end, the pass will be the important part. Don't let the pass rush get to you, find your receivers, utilize Alvin Kamara out of the backfield, and the Saints should be able to march right down the field against Tampa Bay. Then on the defensive side, they have to get a pass rush to Brady, something that really didn't happen for Washington. Washington didn't get to Brady as much as they wanted, but they did force them to field goal attempts. For New Orleans, get to Brady, fluster him like you have the previous games, get turnovers. The Buccaneers don't have a great run game, and if they need to score, they're not going to rely on the run. This means you can focus on the pass. You know what they're going to do. Get up on that pass, play press coverage, something Washington didn't do because Brady wants to beat you quick. Play press coverage on those wide receivers. That'll be your best chance. Now, at the end of the day, this is a quarterback versus quarterback battle in the buildup. And obviously, that's what we want to see from the two future Hall of Famers. But this could easily be a defensive battle as long as both teams hold on to the balls, don't force any turnovers. Now, Breeze got the advantage in the regular season, and if the defense plays similar to that, he will get the most important one in the playoffs. And I think that will end up happening. Breeze will get a 3-0 sweep and get the final laugh, at least this season, although it will be a pretty low-scoring game. 
I have the Saints winning this one 23-19. to So those are my predictions for the Sunday NFL games. Let me know down in the comment section, where did I go wrong? Who do you think is going to win these games? And I'll see you everybody in the next video. For Nick Wire and the 10th inning.